بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So we'll just continue from where we left off inshallah and we arrived at this uh, chapter uh, Al-Kufr Bittawut Wal-Iman Billah So we have this lesson And then inshallah next week Should be our final lesson inshallah So this chapter This is the last chapter now So uh, the chapter we'll discuss today is Al-Kufr Bittawut Wal-Iman Billah So uh, disbelieving in All of the false deities and having iman or having belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the last chapter is where the Shaykh will explain the different types of tawagit. So the different types of false deities, how they present their different presentations so we can be aware of them inshallah. So uh, let's start with the uh, this chapter. So the Shaykh says, وافترض الله على جميع الباد الكفر بالتاغوت والإيمان بالله. So that this is from the original author, the top here in the header. So the Sheikh uh, Rahmullah says that Allah has obligated upon all of His servants to disbelieve in all the false deities and believe in Allah Azawajal. So all the false deities or deities need we need to disbelieve in them. And by doing that, you know, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We affirm the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we disbelieve in the false deities. So then the Shaykh uh, continues, he explains the original author's works. He says <coughs> So from point 77 here, the Shaykh says, قَالَ شَيْخُ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ وَافْتَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَى جَمِيعِ وَافْتَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَى جَمِيعِ الْإِبَادِ الْكُفْرَ الْكُفْرَ بِالْتَاغُوتِ وَالْإِيمَانِ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ تَعْرِيفَ الْتَاغُوتِ وَالْتَاغُوتِ ذَكَرَهُ اللَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى فِي آيَاتٍ كَثِيرَةٍ مِنْهَا قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى فِي سُورَةِ البقرة فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْتَاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْقُرْبَةِ الْوُثْقَى لَمْ فِصَامَ لَهَا وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ اللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاؤُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاؤُهُمْ الطَّاغُوتُ يُخْرِجُونَهُمْ مِنْ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ أُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ وَفِي سُورَةِ النِّسَاءِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجِبْتِ وَالتَّاغُوتِ وَيَقُولُونَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا هَؤُلَاءِ أَهْدَى مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سَبِيلًا وَهَذِهِ الْآيَةُ فِي الْيَهُودِ Let's just stop there and we'll continue. So the Shaykh begins, he says that the original author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he said that Allah has obligated upon all of his servants that they disbelieve in all the false deities and they have belief in Allah Azawajal. Then he mentioned the um, the definition of a ta'ut. So he said that the ta'ut, the false deities, Allah mentioned, Allah Jalla Allah mentioned in many Ayahs from the Quran regarding a ta'ut. So the first ayah 
uh, uh, from the first of the evidences from the Quran is from Surah Al-Baqarah that we read, and then from Surah Al-Nisa. Uh, and so we'll uh, we'll just go to the meanings translation, inshallah. So give me a second to just pull this up. So verse 256 to 257 from Surah Al-Baqarah there is no compulsion in religion verily the right path has become distinct from the wrong path whoever disbelieves in Taghut and believes in Allah then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break and Allah is the all hearer and the all knower Allah is the protector or guardian of those who believe he brings them out from darkness into light. But as for those who disbelieve, their supporters and helpers are Taghut, i.e. false deities and false leaders, etc. They bring them out from light into darkness. Those are the dwellers of the fire and they will abide therein forever. And then the next ayah from Sur, uh, Surat An-Nisa. Let's go there. Moving on to this next page. That's verse 50 from Surat An-Nisa. We shall go there. Verse 50. I thought I did highlight that, but it's just here. Uh, let me just have a look at this to make sure it's correct. I think there's a slight mistake here. But I'll try and find the ayah and we'll come back to it. Oh yeah, here we are. Have you not seen those who claim sanctity for themselves? Nay, but Allah sanctifies whom he pleases and they will not be dealt with injustice even equal to the extent of a fatila, a scale thread in the long uh, slit of a date stone or fatila as I was call it. But I, I need to come back um, I need to come back to this eye and, and find it because there's a wrong reference here from the book. So we'll, we'll come back to that inshallah. <clears throat> So we'll just continue now, inshallah. We'll come back to that at the end. If I forget, one of you remind me, inshallah. And then um, the Shaykh continues and says, وَيَقُولُ سُبْحَانُهُ فِي الْمُنَافِقِينَ أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ يَزْعُمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُوا إِلَى التَّاغُوتِ وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ so this one's from verse 60 Surah An-Nisa that we were close to. So we'll go through that. Have you have you seen those hypocrites who claim that they believe in that which has been sent down to you and that which has uh, that which was sent down before you, and they wish to go for judgment in their disputes to the Taghut, false judges, etc., while they have been ordered to reject them? But Shaitan, Satan, wishes to lead them uh, far astray. So this uh, was revealed uh, with regard to the uh, hypocrites, this ayah here. And then the Shaykh says, وَفِي سُورَةِ النَّحْلِ يَقُولُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى So in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُ الْتَعُودِ So verse 36 of Surah Al-Nahl, let's go there. Verse 36, And verily we have sent among every ummah, community or nation a messenger proclaiming, Worship Allah alone and avoid or keep away from Ta'ud, all false deities, etc. Do not worship Ta'ud besides Allah. So, this is the bit that the Shaykh mentioned here. <clears throat> so then the Shaykh goes on to say, At-Ta'ud, ma'khud min at-tugyan, wa huwa mujawazat al-had, yuqal, taghal ma idhar taf'a mansuba. So then the Shaykh, he gives us <clears throat> the linguistic meaning and so he says that at tagut in the in the language, from a linguistic point of view, me it's taken from Togyan, which itself means when something exceeds the bounds. If something exceeds the bounds, and he gives us an example of that, just to help us understand what that might mean. If it's not clear, then the Sheikh says, for example, when water passes its altitude or its height, and for example, will start spilling. Maybe you, let's say a sink plugged in. You you got you you plugged in uh, the water to, to stop the water from uh, draining, um, and then you leave it. If it goes above, 
its limit, then it's uh, it's basically uh, exceeded the bounds. So, so, so this is the uh, this is the meaning that Sheikh's getting across here. So, if something exceeds its bounds, then the Sheikh says, "Qala Taala Inna Lama Taqal Ma'u Hamalnaqum Fil Jaria." Surah al Haqqa verse eleven. So then let's have a look at this because it, this is a nice example from the Quran itself. Let's go there. But Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Verily when the water rose beyond its limits, Noah, uh, Noah's flood, we carried you mankind in the floating ship that was constructed by Noah alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam. So that that further cement uh, as an understanding uh, what Tawagut and Tawiyan means, yeah? So then the Shaykh goes on to say, أَمَّا مَعْنَ التَّاغُوتِ فِي الشَّرَعِ فَهُوَ كَمَا ذَكِرَ ابْنُ الْقَيِّمِ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ وَنَقَلَهُ عَنْهُ الشَّيْخِ هَا هُنَا التَّاغُوتِ مَا تَجَاوَزَ بِهِ الْعَبْدُ حَدَّهُ الْعَبْدُ لَهُ حَدْ لِأَنَّهُ عَبْدٌ حَدَّدَ اللَّهِ أو حَدَّدَ اللَّهِ لَهُ حُدُودًا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَقِفَ إِنْدَهَا فَإِذَا تَجَاوَزَهَا فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونُ طَاغُوتًا فَمَنْ تَجَاوَزَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي هَدَّدَهَا لِإِبَادِهِ وَأَمْرَهُمْ أَنْ لَا يَتَجَاوَزُوا أَنْ لَا يَتَجَاوَزُوهَا وَأَنْ لَا يُقَرِّبُوهَا أو نعم وَأَنْ لَا يُقَرِّبُوهَا فَهُوَ طَاغُوتٌ فَإِذَا أَصَى اللَّهُ فَإِذَا أَصَى اللَّهُ تَجَاوَزَ حُدُودَهُ وَطَغَى فَإِنَّهُ يسمى تاغوتا لأنه طغى وتعدى حدود الله فقوله ما تجاوز به العبد حده من معبود أو متبوع أو متع So then in this paragraph point 78 in the sheikh he says here so in regards to the meaning of a taghut in the legislative meaning in the shar'i meaning then the Sheikh says that uh, the original author quoted Ibn al-Qim rahimahullah uh, here and he said, and he's quoted him saying that at taghut it is when uh, somebody or, uh, uh, from one of the servants of Allah Jalla um, uh, exceeds the bounds in worship, exceeds his bounds in worship. And the Sheikh says because the servant Allah has set limits, has set boundaries and limits for him. And that Allah has made obligatory on his servants to stop with the boundary, beside the boundary. Do not go past it, just stop so you do not go outside of that boundary. Stop within the boundary, the limits. So if somebody, if one of the servants of Allah Jalla wa'ala, then um, exceeds the bounds for then if that occurs then he is a tagut so this is how uh, the, this is the understanding uh, of, of what tagut is in in the legislative meaning so then the sheikh says so whoever uh, exceeds uh, the bounds set by Allah Jalla wa'ala then then he is basically a tagut why? because he is Exceeding the bounds set by Allah, he's going past them, um, and so he is disobeying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in that, um, and so that is what Tuyan is or a Tawut, yeah, and he's gone beyond the bounds. So then the Sheikh he continues he says here what we just read shortly. Um, فَقَوْلُهُ مَا تَجَاوَزَ بِهِ الْعَبْدِ حَدَّهُ مِنْ مَعْبُودِ أَوْ مَتْبُوعِ أَوْ مُتَعْ So now we know that it's wherever a servant uh, goes beyond the bounds or the limits set by Allah, whether that is in worship or whether that is in somebody that they follow, a person being followed or a person being obeyed. So the Sheikh will explain this in more detail as we go along. So... <clears throat> The Sheikh says, هذا التعريف الشامل للتاغوت لأن الله جل وعلا أمر بعبادته وحده لا شريك له وأمر باتباع رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأمر بطاعته وطاعة رسوله فيما حلل 
وحرم فمن تجاوز هذا الأمر فهو طاغوت من من تجاوز حد الإبادة التي أوجبها الله واختص بها ونفاها عن غيره فعبد مع الله غيره فهو طاغوت المشرك طاغوت لأنه تجاوز الحد في الإبادة و وعبد مع الله غيره صرف صرف الإبادة لغير مستحق مستحقها وكذلك من عبد وهو راد So then in this paragraph the Sheikh says so this definition is is uh, it's ample it's um, sufficient with regards to the Tawood because Allah Jalla wa Ala He commanded uh, He commands that is uh, worshipped alone in truth and that nothing is um, associated uh, with him in worship. He also commanded, Allah Jalla wa Ala commanded that we follow the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he also commanded that we are obedient to Allah Jalla wa Ala and that we are obedient to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that which uh, as, uh, in that which is halal and that which is haram. What Allah Jalla wa Ala has made haram and what Allah Jalla wa Ala has made halal. So whoever exceeds this command, then he, uh, these commands or these, um, yeah, the, whoever exceeds this, these rules here that are set, then he's a ta'ud. Whoever exceeds the limits in worship that Allah has commanded him with, and, is, and, and that is specific to Allah Jalla wa Ala, then he is a ta'ud if he goes beyond it. For example, uh, somebody who worships other than Allah Jalla wa Ala or shares uh, his worship with Allah and other than Allah, then he is a mushrik and this is a ta'ud, example of a ta'ud. Why? Because he has exceeded the limits. The shaykh says he has exceeded the limits uh, in that which uh, is uh, which in that which is defined as worship, i.e., worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and not associating associating any partners with Him. So, what the what's going on here is that that worship is being taken away from His rightful place and is going elsewhere, i.e., to whether it be a statue, a tree, anything other than Allah, uh, that that is not deserved of that worship. And so therefore, they exceed the bounds in worship and are, are therefore by definition a ta'ud. Also, the Shaykh mentions uh, an additional point here, also, also whoever is worshipped, so anybody who is alive and who is worshipped and is pleased with him being worshipped, this is also a ta'ud as well. <clears throat> then the Shaykh goes on to say, الَّذِي يَعْبُدُهُ النَّاسِ بِهَذَا وَيَفْرَحْ وَيَتَرَّعْ وَيَتَرَأَسَ بِهَذَا الشَّيْءِ وَيَتَزَعَمْ هَذَا طَاغُوتِ مِثْلُ فِرْعَونُ وَنِمْرُودُ وَمَشَايِخَ الطُّرُقِ الصُّوفِيَّةِ الْغُلَاتِ الَّذِينَ يَعْبُدُهُمْ أَتْبَاعَهُمْ وَيُرْضَوْنَ بِذَلِكَ أو, ي... أَوْ يَدْعُونَ النَّاسَ إِلَى هَذَا أَيْ إِلَى أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهُمْ كَمَا سَيَأْتِي فَهَذَا طَاغُوتِ فِي الْإِبَادَة so in this paragraph, the Sheikh he says, also those who, um, you know, worship the people, and by this, you know, they are pleased, and and those who are, you know, uh, are seeking to be in charge and take authority uh, in in this matter, they are uh, considered a ta'ud. For example, the Sheikh gives us some examples from old and recent examples. Also, the Sheikh says, for example, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Nimrod, Nimrud, and the so-called scholars of the Sufiya, the Sufi movement, who go beyond bounds and extremes in the religion. Uh, the Sheikh gives some examples. He says, for example, uh, you know, their scholars are worshipped, their, their, their followers worship them and they're pleased with that. Or they call the people to this, they call people to the worship, uh, to this kind of worship which is wrong, which entails shirk and, and is a form of ta'ut, yeah? I.e., the shaykh says uh, that they, they they worship them. And the shaykh says, which will come, the shaykh will explain this in more detail. So the shaykh says that this is an example of a ta'ut in worship. 
Yeah, transgressing bounds in worship and is known as a ta'ud. Then the second type here, the Sheikh mentions matbu. So the ta'ud that's related to matbu being followed. So the Sheikh says, Qawluhu o matbu. Allah Jalla wa Ala amara jami'ul khalq an yattabi'u Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَلَا يَجُوزُ لِأَحَدٍ أَنْ يَتْبَعَ غَيْرَهُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ فَمَنْ اتَّبَعَ غَيْرُ الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَزَّعَمَ أَنَّ هَذَا جَائِزٌ فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونُ تَعْغُوتًا لِأَنَّهُ اتَّبَعَ غَيْرَ الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ الَّذِي أُمِرَ بِالتِّبَاعِي فَهَاؤُلَاءِ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِذَا اتَّبَعُوا طَرِيقَةَ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فالمتبع هو الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أما هؤلاء فإنهم مبلغون فقط يتبعون للحق وما وافقوا فيه اتباع الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وما خالفوا فيه الرسول فلا يجوز اتباعه So then the Sheikh mentions a very important point here very important point, especially present day times. The Sheikh says, and with regards to those that are followed, matbu. The Sheikh says, Allah Jalla wa Ala commanded all of His creation, all of us, that we follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is the one to be followed. So it's not obligatory. So it's not permissible for anybody. That they follow other than uh, other than him, alayhi salatu wasalam. So whoever follows other than the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he thinks or assumes that this is permissible, for indeed he is a ta'ut. Why? Because he is following other than the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That Allah has commanded him to follow. That he's been commanded to follow. So we know that Allah has commanded us to follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So then the Sheikh says, so the following is specific to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is specific to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and nobody else. As for other than him, from the scholars and you know the callers to Islam. Um, then following them then following them if they are followed then they are to be followed because they are following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. so if they are following the way of the Prophet ﷺ, and then we follow them then we are essentially following the Prophet ﷺ in that example because the one who is being followed ultimately is the Prophet is the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. however as for Though uh, these indeed the ones who call or the, the scholars and the ones who call to Islam they are just um, spreading the message of Islam you know uh, and so with regards to that then they are to be followed in that which is the truth as in that which agrees with the way of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so if is, so if there's anything that disagrees with the way of the Prophet ﷺ, then that's not to be followed. But if something is in accordance with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then that's to be followed. Why? Because the, ultimately, the one to be followed is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So whoever's following him, and then you're following them, you're essentially following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because all we're doing is repeating that what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and did, etc., and commanded us with. But anything that goes against the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then we don't follow that. Otherwise, then as the Sheikh mentioned, if somebody's unrestrictedly following someone and they're following them, whatever they say, whether it's against, or whether it goes against the way uh, goes in opposition to uh, uh, the sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or his actions, etc. Then, then this becomes a ta'ud because what's happening is you just blind following uh, somebody else. Whatever they say, you just follow it, you know, uh, without looking at the evidence, without seeing whether this is actually the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
Then the Shaykh continues. He says, مثال ذلك مشايخ الطرق الصوفية يتبعهم مريدهم وعبيدهم في غير طاعة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم بل يقولون إننا لسنا بحاجة إلى الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم نحن نأخذ مما أخذ منه الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ونتلقى عن الله مباشرة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يتلقى عن الله بالواسطة بواسطة جبريل ونحن نتلقى عن الله مباشرة ويقولون أنتم ترون دينكم عن ميت ونحن نر نروي ديننا عن الله سبحانه وتعالى لأنهم يزعمون أن شيوخهم يتصلون بالله ويتلقون من الله مباشرة So then the Shaykh gives us some examples of this about the ones being followed and incorrectly as well. So the Shaykh says, for example, the scholars of the uh, different uh, sects within the sects of Sufiya, um, their followers follow them and their servants follow them in other than that which uh, the messenger commanded, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather they say, so the Sheikh says, rather they say, we, we, uh, uh, you know, we are not in need. We are not in need of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They say that we take um, uh, from what the uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took from, and they say we receive revelation from Allah. Directly, and they say the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, um, you know, received revelation through a middle uh, uh, a middle path. I.e., they received revelation via Jibril, but we receive revelation directly. We don't even have a middle, you know, person or a middle way how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam received. The revelation, so they're saying that they receive it directly, so they no need of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They say you see, you you know, take from as in receive that from somebody who's died, whereas we take it directly from Allah subhanahu wa taala. Because and the Sheikh says why they say this because they assume that their scholars, their scholars. Uh, have a direct connection with Allah Jalla wa'ala and that they receive revelation therefore from Allah Jalla wa'ala directly. Obviously this is a, a falsehood, isn't it? But this is how um, the Shaykh is explaining that this is how uh, people get misled and they fall into the situation of Ta'ut that's being followed because essentially all these, these so-called scholars they become Tawagit, they become Ta'uts because these people start following them and everything that they say, thinking that they're receiving revelation when clearly uh, that's not the case. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, بَلَغَ بِهِمُ الْحَدْ إِلَىٰ هَذَا تُغْيَانُ وَلِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ هَذِهِ تَرِيكَتُهُمْ لَا شَكَّ أَنَّ هَا أُولَاءِ هُمْ رُؤُوسُ التَّوَاغِيدِ وَلِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ لِأَنَّهُ لَا تَرِيكَ إِلَىٰ اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَىٰ إِلَّا بِتِبَاءِ قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ قُلْ أَطِيءُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولُ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ So then, the Shaykh says in this paragraph, the Shaykh says in this paragraph that, he says that they've, they've gone beyond the bounds, um, these types of people, they go beyond the bounds. You know, they transgress the bounds and we seek refuge in Allah. Jalla It says that this is their way, no doubt, that these, they are from the heads of the Tawarit. They are from the heads of the false deities when we seek refuge in uh, Allah. And the Shaykh, he says, because the the way to Allah, Jalla is by following the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's the only way to Allah, subhanahu wa taala. As as the Sheikhs clarified here, 
and then we'll just get the meaning uh, of the ayah that we just read. That's from Surah to Ali Imran. So let's go there. Verse one, uh, verse thirty-one to thirty-two. We'll go um, read the meanings. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to mankind: If you really love Allah, then follow me. I accept Islamic monotheism. Follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. And Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, obey Allah and the Messenger. But if they turn away, then Allah does not like the disbelievers. So then that's evidence that the Sheikh brings. And it's clear, alhamdulillah, from what uh, the Sheikh has been discussing. So let's continue. So then the Sheikh says, فَالَّذِي يَتَّبَعَ غَيْرُ الرَّسُولِ هَذَا يَتَّبِرْ طَغُوتًا وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ يَدْعُوا إِلَى اتِّبَاعِهِ وَيَقُولُ لِلنَّاسِ أَنَا آتِيكُمْ بِالْأَمْرِ مِنَ اللَّهِ مُبَاشَرَةً هَذَا أَكْبَرَ التَّوَاغِيدِ فِي الْعَالِمْ وَلِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ So then the Sheikh says that those um, uh, who follow other than the, uh, other than the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they're considered from the Tawut, yeah, the false deities. Like, then the Sheikh says, like that, from those who call to uh, following them, you know, f- uh, following them, they say, to the people, uh, I'm, I come with a command from Allah, or I come with an affair from Allah directly. So they, they obviously they're lying, but they say this that they are receiving uh, revelation directly from Allah, Jalla And this is the type of ta'ud as the Sheikh mentioned in the previous two paragraphs. The, the Sheikh says that this is from the greatest of these false deities in the world, on the planet, uh, and we seek refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal. So then the Sheikh moves on to the third type. He says, Qawluhu o muta, as in, in obedience. Now this is to do with obedience. So the Sheikh, he says, Ata'atu innama hiya lillahi wa li rasulihi bi ma halala wa harrama. Qala ta'ala, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu atiyu Allah wa atiyu al-rasul wa uli al-amri minkum fa in tanaza'atum fi shay'in farduhu ila Allah wa al-rasul in kuntum tu'minun billahi wa liyawm al-akhir ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا فالحلال ما أحله الله والحرام ما حرمه الله وليس لأحد أن يشارك وليس لأحد أن يشارك الله في تحليل وتحريم ولذلك حكم الله على من حلل وحرم أو أطاع من من فعل ذلك بأنه مشرك سدن the Sheikh says here with regard, regarding the obedience now. So we move on to the this uh, sphere regarding obedience. And the Sheikh says here that obedience, it is all of it is for Allah Jalla wa'ala. Obedience is for all for Allah Jalla wa'ala and, and his messenger, what he came with. With regards to that which uh, was made permissible and that which was made haram, as in impermissible. And then the Sheikh uh, quotes an ayah here from Surah An-Nisa verse 59 which we will have a look at now, the meaning of, which is, O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and those of you Muslims who are in authority, and if you differ in anything amongst yourselves, refer it to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa If you believe in Allah, and in the last day, that is better and more suitable for final determination. So then the Sheikh says, so with regards to what is halal or permissible, that is what Allah has made permissible or halal. And that which is haram, it is what Allah has made haram, right, and impermissible. And it isn't for anybody to partake in this affair with regards to making something halal or haram. Once it's an affair, that's for Allah Jalla wa'ala. And therefore, then the Shaykh, he says here, so, so likewise, or like that, the uh, the hukum or the uh, the affair here, with regards to who um, makes something halal or makes something haram uh, or is um, followed in that, as in who's, who follows and is obedient to that uh, with regards to an action, then this is considered shirk. So if somebody says, um, let, let, let's say, okay, we all know, we can all, as an example, simple example, we all know pork, yeah, uh, the meat of uh, eating pork, for example, we know that this is haram. And so if, if somebody says, now comes, like, for example, let's say, for example, I said it, I come now and say, oh, uh, yeah, oh, this is halal, you can eat this. And then come with the bogus evidence or whatever it is, or even without an evidence, then 
then then this is obviously considered shirk because because I'm raising the level, I'm raising my level to the level of Allah Azawajal in making a, a legislative or a legislation, basically making new laws, making laws. But as we know, all of the legislation is for Allah alone. Nobody else has the right to do that. Yeah. So then that that is considered shirk. This is what the Sheikh is mentioning here. Yeah. Then the Sheikh also mentions another ayah. He says, "Qala Subhanahu wa Taala." فَكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ بِآيَاتِهِ مُؤْمِنِينَ وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَقَدْ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِلَّا مُضْطُرِرْتُمْ إِلَيْهِ وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا لَيُذِلُّونَ بِأَحْوَائِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ إِلْمٍ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُعْتَدِينَ وَذَرُوا ظَاهِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَبَاطِنَهُ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْسِبُونَ الْإِثْمَ سَيُجْزَوْنَ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ يَقْتَرِفُونَ وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسْقِ وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَيُحُونَ لَيُحُونَ إِلَى أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ لِيُجَادِلُوكُمْ وَإِنْ أَطَعْتُمُوهُمْ إِنَّكُمْ لَمُشْرِكُونَ لِأَنَّ أَهْلَ الْجَاهِلِيَّ يَقُولُونَ الْمَيْتَ الميتة حلال لأن الله هو الذي ذبحها فهي أولى بالحل مما ذبحتم وذكيتم فالله جل وعلا يقول لا تأكلوا إلا ما ذكي ذكاة الشرعية وحرم عليكم الميتة So then uh, the Sheikh mentions this ayah as, a, as another evidence So let's read that And this is from سورة الانعام So if you go there Verse 118 to 121. So bear with me while we read all of these verses. So eat of that meat on which Allah's name has been pronounced while slaughtering the animal. If you are believers in his proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, etc. And why should you not eat of that meat on which Allah's name has been pronounced at the time of slaughtering the animal while he has explained to you in detail what is forbidden to you except under compulsion of necessity and surely many do lead mankind astray by their own desires through lack of knowledge certainly your lord knows best the transgressors leave all mankind all kinds of sin open and secret verily those who commit sin will get due recompense for that which they used to commit eat not all believers of, of that meat on which allah's name has not been pronounced at the time of the slaughtering of the animal for sure it is fisk a sin and disobedience of allah and certainly the shayateen, the devils, do inspire their friends from mankind to dispute with you. And if you obey them by making al a dead animal, legal by eating it, then you would indeed be mushrikun polytheists, because they, devils and their friends, made lawful to you to eat that which Allah has made unlawful to eat. And you obeyed them by considering it lawful to eat. And by doing so, you worship them and to worship others besides Allah is polytheism. So then... This, uh, Alhamdulillah, in the translation, this explains what the Sheikh mentions just after this with regards to that. So if anybody needs to have a look at that, they can go back to these ayahs and uh, review them. And this is what the Sheikh has mentioned in the few lines below, uh, what's been made clear in the, the, the meanings of, uh, in the English translation. So Alhamdulillah, we'll just continue from there. Okay, we only have a couple of paragraphs left and then we'll finish for the day, inshallah. So then the Sheikh, he says, وَهَا يَقُولُونَ لَا الْمَيْتَ حَلَالْ هِيَ أَوْلَى بِالْحَلِّ Okay, so we have all the Sheikh, uh, the, the ayah that we just read, the ayahs that we read, they explain this as well. So the Sheikh is just mentioning what was mentioned in the meanings of the ayah as well here. So that the Mushrikun, the polytheists, they would say that um, that it's pure, the, the dead animal, the, this is was from their belief that uh, a dead animal uh, was pure to eat. And they would say this, but of course we know th through what Allah has told us and the Messenger of Allah has informed us uh, with regards to that. Uh, at the time of slaughtering, uh, we say uh, the name of Allah over it and it becomes halal. And that is the legislation of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And that if you see a dead animal, for example, um, and uh, and you just make it halal, then then you're, essentially what's happening here is that uh, if you believe that or follow those people who say that and believe them, then you're following them and it's a tantamount to shirk because you, you are following them in the legislation that they are making over Allah's legislation. 
obviously, if you're in a situation in a dire need, as as mentioned in the ayah as well that we just read, if you're in dire need, that's a different situation. If you're in dire need, you're dying or something, and you can't find any food, whatever that situation is, then that's a different situation. You can eat from that meat, but that's a separate issue altogether. But it was explained in the ayah anyway. Um, but just to note that slight difference in in a situation there. So then the Sheikh says, وَلِهَذَا رَدَّ عَلَى الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَقَالَ وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرْ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسْقٍ أي خروج عن طاعة الله سبحانه عن عز وجل وقال بعدها وإن الشياطين لا لا يوحون إلى إلى أوليائهم يقولون الميتة ذبح الله والمذكات أنتم ذبحتموها فكيف تستحلون ما ذبحتم ولا تستحلون ما ذبحه الله هذه مجادلة بالباطل ثم قال تعالى وإن أطعتموهم إنكم لمشركون هذا من شرك الطاعة التحليل وتحريم حق لله جل وعلا. So then the Sheikh mentioned here and quotes the parts of the ayahs that we read earlier that essentially what's being said here is that if uh, that these arguments are false when when these people come and they may even be here today you know it could be the next few weeks you might have some situation with somebody it might be the same thing or they may believe this that they say or you know that you know it's pure it's it's pure, you know, um, that their belief is that if something's dead, it died, then it's pure because they believe that Allah has, uh, uh, you know, slaughtered it, which is false, clearly false. The Sheikh mentioned that this is false. But whoever then believes them and follows their way and is obedient in that, in, in what they've said with their falsehood, then basically this is tantamount to shirk. Why? Because you are taking that person's legislation or hukum over the hukum of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Yeah? So, so this is what the Shaykhs mentioned here again. Um, and it just mentions that this argument from the Mushrikeen is, is, is clearly incorrect uh, with the evidences that we have from the Quran. Alhamdulillah. So, we just got this last bit here and then we'll, we'll finish here on this point here. So then, the Sheikh says, فَلَا يَجُوزُ لِأَحَدٍ أَنْ يُحَلِّلَ أَوْ يُحَرِّمَ مَنْ مِنْ إِنْدِي نَفْسِهِ أَوْ يُتِيعَ مِنْ مَنْ حَلَّلَ أَوْ حَرَّمَ مِنْ إِنْدِي مِنْ إِنْدِي نَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّهُ طَاغُوتٌ وَمُطِيءٌ لِلتَّوَاغِيطِ الَّذِي يُحَلِّلُونَ وَيُحَرِّمُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ هَذَا مَا نَقُولُ أَوْ مُطَاعٍ أي مطاع في في التحليل وتحريم لأن التحليل وتحريم حق لله جل وعلا والرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم مبلغ عن الله ما حلل ما حلل وحرم. So then the Sheikh is saying here that therefore it's impermissible for for anybody that they make something permissible or make something impermissible from their own selves or that they uh, are followed in that which they have made permissible or impermissible from their selves. So whoever does this, for indeed he is a ta'ud, uh, and who, and whoever obeys uh, the uh, the uh, this kind of person, um, then he is obeying the uh, from uh, obeying the ta'ud or ta'wid in regards to obedience with uh, with regards to uh, that which um, uh, is Allah's right, Allah's right. Uh, Making something permissible or making something impermissible is Allah's right only. It's not for anybody else. So whoever follows them, then this comes under what the Sheikh was talking about earlier. It comes under the um, uh, uh, the type of ta'ud that is followed, obeyed, for example, obeyed in what's uh, made haram or halal. Why? Because the Sheikh finishes here and he says in the last sentence, he says here that why? Because uh, uh, that which is haram or that which is made haram or that which is made halal is the right of Allah Jalla wa'ala only and nobody else is right and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has conveyed uh, uh, to us that which Allah made halal and haram so so the, the shaykh concludes here uh, we'll finish here as well uh, and then we'll continue um, um, the last lesson inshallah next week which is going to be discussing the types of false deities in more detail. The Sheikh will discuss that and inshallah will translate it as well and gain the benefit. Bismillah ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.